Hello and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting geometry problem from Leap Code called Count Number of Trapezoids 1. Don't let the geometry tag scare you off. At its heart, this is a counting problem that we can solve with some clever logic and simple math. We'll break down exactly what we need to look for and how to count it efficiently. First, let's look at what we're given. The input is a list of points where each point has an X and a Y coordinate on a 2D plane. Our goal is to pick exactly four distinct points from this list, but we can't just pick any four points. They need to form a specific shape called a horizontal trapezoid. We need to return the total number of ways we can form this shape. Since the answer can be huge, we'll return it modulo 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. So what exactly counts as a horizontal trapezoid? The problem defines it as a convex quadrilateral, with at least one pair of horizontal sides. In simpler terms, this means two of the sides must be parallel to the x-axis. Think about what makes a line horizontal. The two endpoints must have the same y-coordinate. So to form a horizontal trapezoid, we basically need two distinct horizontal lines at different heights. This means we need to find two points at one y-level, say y1, and another two points at a different y-level, say y2. If we have that, connecting them forms our trapezoid. Let's walk through an example to see this in action. We have a list of points here. Let's group them by their height or their y-coordinate. At height 0, we have three points, one at x equals 1, one at x equals 2, and one at x equals 3. At height 2, we have two points, one at x equals 2, and one at x equals 3. Now remember, we need two points at one height and two points at another height. Let's count how many horizontal edges or lines we can make at each level. At height 0, we have 3 points. How many ways can we pick 2 points out of 3? We can connect the 1st and 2nd, the 2nd and 3rd, or the 1st and 3rd. That gives us 3 possible bottom bases. At height 2, we have only 2 points. We can only connect them to make one single horizontal line, so we have 3 options for the bottom edge and 1 option for the top edge. To get the total number of trapezoids, we just multiply these possibilities. 3 times 1 equals 3. Simple, right? Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python logic, as it's very readable. But don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for Java, C++, and JavaScript towards the end of the video, so stick around. This brings us to our main approach, which the editorial calls hash table plus geometry mathematics. First, we don't care about the x-coordinates at all initially. We just need to know how many points share the same y-coordinate. So we'll iterate through our points and use a hash map or dictionary to count the frequency of each y-value. Second, for each y-level with, say, k points, we calculate how many pairs we can form. This is a classic combinations problem. k, choose 2. The formula is k times k minus 1, divided by 2. This tells us the number of horizontal edges at that height. Finally, we need to sum up the product of edge counts for every pair of different heights. Now we could use a nested loop to multiply the edge counts of every height with every other height, but that would be slow if we have many unique heights. There's a smarter way. As we iterate through the heights, we can keep a running total of all the edges we've seen so far. For the current height, we calculate its edges. Any of these current edges can form a trapezoid with any edge we've seen in the past. So we multiply our current edges by the total sum of previous edges and add that to our answer. After that, we add our current edges to the running total so future heights can pair with them. This allows us to solve it in a single pass. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic. Now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first. And don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together step by step. Alright, here is the complete Python solution. It's surprisingly short for a geometry problem. We use a dictionary for counting, handle the modulo arithmetic, and apply that running sum logic we just discussed. Let's break it down. First things first, we need to know how many points are at each vertical level. We create a default dictionary called point underscore num. Then we loop through every point in our input list. We grab the y coordinate, which is at index one, and increment its count in our dictionary. After this loop, we know exactly how many points sit on each horizontal line. Now for the core logic. We loop through the counts we just collected. Let's say p underscore num is the number of points at a specific height. First, we calculate edge, which is the number of ways to pick two points from p underscore num. We use the formula n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Next, we update our answer. 
We take the edges we just found and multiply them by total underscore sum, which holds all the edges from previous heights we've processed. This pairs our current level with every past level in one go. Finally, we add our current edge count to total underscore sum so that subsequent levels can pair with the edges we just found. What about edge cases? What if we have fewer than four points? Or what if a height only has one point? Our math handles this beautifully. If a height has only one point, the calculation for edge becomes 1 times 0 divided by 2, which is 0. This is correct. You can't make a line segment with one point. Since the edge count is 0, it contributes nothing to the answer. The code is robust enough that we don't need special if statements for these cases. So how efficient is this? For time complexity, we iterate through the list of points once to build our map, and then iterate through the map's values once to calculate the answer. Both of these are linear operations, so the overall time complexity is big O of n, where n is the number of points. For space complexity, we use a hash map to store the counts. In the worst case, every point has a unique y-coordinate, so the map size grows with n, thus, our space complexity is also big O of n. Alright, that covers the main logic. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down line by line, but the logic is identical to the Python version. Just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. Here is the full solution in Java. Notice we use long for the answer and total sum to prevent overflow before applying the modulo. Feel free to pause here. Next up is the C++ version. We use an unordered map for efficiency. Again, watch out for integer overflow by using long long. And finally, the JavaScript solution. Since numbers can get quite large, we use big int, denoted by the n suffix, to handle the calculations safely, without losing precision. To wrap things up, here are the key takeaways. We turned a scary-sounding geometry problem into a simple counting task, by realizing we only cared about y-coordinates. We used the combinations formula to count edges instantly. And, most importantly, we used the running sum trick to combine pairs of heights efficiently, keeping our solution fast and linear. Alright, before we go, I want to quickly show you a personal project I built to solve a problem that always drove me crazy. It's an app called My Daily To Do. My biggest frustration with every other to-do app was retyping the same things every single day. Go to the gym, review code, work on the daily lead code problem. You know the drill. So I built my app around one simple but powerful idea, separating your routine tasks from your one-off tasks. Routine tasks marked with the little refresh icon, automatically reset for the next day. One-off tasks, like ship new feature, get the little puff of smoke icon, and they disappear for good once you're done. This small change turns a dumb checklist into a smart scheduler. If that sounds useful, you can try it right now on the web. The link is in the description. And one more thing I want to make super clear. Right now, as a thank you for being an early supporter, the app is 100% free. There are no ads, and no subscriptions whatsoever. This means you get access to everything, including really powerful features like presets, which let you save entire task lists and load them with a single tap. Now down the road, creating new presets will likely become part of a premium plan to help support the channel. But, and this is the important part, any presets you create now, while it's all free, are yours to keep and use forever. So it's the perfect time to check it out on the web, play with all the features and build out your perfect setup at no cost. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leak code easy, medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, 
there's always the boba fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.